Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is Friday evening. I'm still at school. I'm not having my lens on. I'm like really tired right now. Uh, but I wanted to get this message off my chest uh, before I hit the weekend and make sure you guys had an opportunity to listen to this. Um, try, try to keep it under 10 minutes. I want to talk about implicit bias. I want to talk about how tired we all are. Um, it's difficult to be at our best when we are tired. We all know that. Um, and we know this year has been really hard. I've heard from several certificated and classified staff in our building, out of our building, people I know pretty much across the state, that this is the hardest year they've had. Um, and you mentioned this feels like they're going back to their first year of teaching. I know last year, many people voiced that too when we were in distance learning. And I think this is even tougher because now we've got all the ingredients of all the safety pieces. Um, for our certificated staff, we did some professional development on finding small wins, if you guys remember that from Crystal Mountain. And you're all champions at doing that for your students. And I wanna emphasize, please do that for yourselves as well. The article from the author talked about making sure you can define success for you at the end of the school year. My counter to that was that's too long to wait, especially with what we're dealing with um, day in, day out right now. I like to find a small win every single day. I don't always find them, but some days I do. And as long as I look, look for them, um, it kind of keeps me working towards my true north. So the point of the PD was find those wins, take a moment and celebrate them, celebrate them with a colleague. And I'm talking about your wins, whatever those might be. They might seem so trivial at some times, but they will help you get over this. And the, the basis of the article was to help teachers refresh and avoid um, burnout, basically. Um, when we are tired, um, as I mentioned, it's difficult to be at the top of your game. And what starts happening uh, for a lot of folks is we start to default to old behaviors and old, um, basically, belief patterns. And this is where implicit biases can creep in, okay? Uh, at times, it can be an honest mistake, and definitely we all can be bound to make an honest mistake. So if I'm not making at least an honest mistake a day, I feel like I'm not even trying. I'm always going to go with a positive or a mindset of positive presupposition when mistakes are made. I'm always going to remember that, you know, we're human. Nobody's perfect. They probably were trying to do this, yet here was the impact. However, some mistakes cannot be overlooked and need collegial support or even administrative support. Since I've come to Auburn High School, it has not been uncommon for students and even some staff members to report microaggressions to me. Okay. I have addressed every single one of them. I just want you to know that I do not sweep these under the carpet. I roll up with the mindset that I want to help somebody improve their game, their practice, their relationships with others. And I'll always come from that lens. Microaggressions can impact from a racial or cultural lens. And these are microaggressions that impact from a gender lens or even from the lens of homosexuality or any type of sexuality for that matter. There's others too, but I wanna keep this short. Uh, could be economic and so forth, or even cognitive um, type of uh, differences. As our students at AHS become more aware and empowered of their place in the world, they're speaking out more, okay? Not always to seek revenge, but sometimes just to say, we need to do better because they truly want to follow us as leaders and not just into the content and not just for their lives beyond high school. I'm talking about the here and the now. They hold us to a higher standard and we have to answer that call, not only for our students, but for our colleagues who have felt the impacts of microaggressions. When we're in front of students or in front of colleagues or basically in front of anybody, we don't need to use the N word or the F slur, or any other type of language that was considered historically or presently derogatory. We don't need to do that ever. Kids are really looking to us to make sure we are setting that tone. We've had at least six instances just in one week, and I followed up on every single one of them. Truth be told, okay, most of the times people didn't realize the impact 
because they knew what their intent was. But the impact is what we're going to be judged on at the end of the day. So if you're not 100% sure what this looks like or how you might be impacting others, I would say I would do some searching into microaggressions. I would do some searching into implicit bias. And I think if you take a little bit of time, and it doesn't take a lot of time, I mean, you could sit down and do some searches in less than an hour, and you'll start seeing the connections. And you'll probably look back on your own life and go, okay, that's why that person, that's why I felt that way. Or maybe that's why I made someone else feel this way. So obviously, um, this is a pretty important topic. That's why I'm speaking out on it. And just know that um, we're here to help. We've provided lots of PD. We have our equity team meetings. They run pretty much on schedule every two weeks. And I know not everybody can tap into those, but there's resources all over the place. Being involved with this type of work is very much at the heart of equity. And it is not an opt-in. It is, we are all doing this. We are all rolling up our sleeves and we can no longer do harm. So I want to make sure I get that across to you. And again, you have all kinds of resources for you around the building in this district. And if you're not comfortable talking to one of the administrators, um, hopefully you've got somebody in your department. If you want to reach out to someone outside of our building, um, let me know because I don't really care how people learn. I just want us to be at the top of our game and do the best we can. So anyway, that's all I've got. Thank you for listening. Have a great week, everybody.